All right, on deck, we have Northampton. Up next, we have Providence. Who are you sending up? Esteban. Esteban, please come up here. For Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. They killed the second before the earth had enough time to rotate the first blood off. It's amazing how little can change in 24 hours, but not at all surprising. I woke up to it on Tuesday, stayed up to it on Wednesday. You can only sleep through it so many times before a stopped legacy becomes a replacement for the sunrise before remembrance becomes a part of your morning routine. There's a certain rhythm to it. A black soul gone, three meals, no shower, a change of clothes, a black soul gone, conversations, a bus ride, the walk to work, a black soul gone. My body's clock only knows how to count down. It's gotten to the point where I have to make mnemonics to match the names to the stories, like Alton Sterling. Sometimes a black man can hold silver in his name, can hold discs of silver in his hands and say, would you like these? Does my luster offend you? Is my existence a runner-up trophy? Philando Castile, sometimes we build structures to protect ourselves. When we're under attack, it's those same structures that end up closing us in, like a hunting ground, like a mausoleum. White supremacy is a siege ladder. It takes an army to hold it up. It takes a force of nature to tarnish a precious metal, to turn a pillar of the community into rubble. Erosion was once a timely process. Leaving, leaving enough time to rebuild before the next disintegration for hope to settle in between the intervals. Now it's more streamlined, efficient. The shadow of bodies, a sundial circling back to midnight. The tearing away of a calendar page. A steam whistle signaling the day's work is done. A back-to-back -back marathon, a double feature, part of your regularly scheduled programming. Their lives were stolen the same way the news reported on them, in snapshots, in sound bites, in a 24-hour cycle. Thank you, Esteban. That's awesome. If y'all are interested in going to any of the shows that are performed tonight, you should like download the Slam Find app, which happens to be filming this, and it will tell you where to go, when to go, how to do it. They got it? Are we good? Is everything fine? There was some food orders we wanted to make sure. Oh, okay. But somebody got their food. Okay. Sorry. Food is important, so I will pause the show for food. All right. We have, now I'm going to continue the show. We have four judges. We have four judges. I need five judges. I'm just going to look in the direction of the fifth judge until something... Oh, there we go. All right, cool. So, from low to high, we have a 7.1. We have an 8.5. We have a 9, a 9.5, and a 9.9. That's going to be a 27 even for Providence. Let's hear for the poet. On deck. We have Slam Fear or Die. Up next is the first team in the last round of this entire two day event. Can we hear it? <laughs> Northampton Poetry. Who are you sending up? Natalie. Natalie, please come up here.
Ecologists have observed that an animal, when stuck in a trap, will chew its own limbs off to break free. Said it will fight to preserve its life even at the cost of its own maiming. And sometimes I can't help but feel like that bind beast, teeth ready to sink into skin in a bloody firework of freedom, sever whatever piece of meat is forced to remain in this box of asphyxiating assimilation, forced to fester in the rotting flesh of a conforming carcass. I know this trap will be deadly, but some traps do not always come thirsty blades open. Some traps you won't even know you're in, like it took me a year to realize my ex-lover was a trap. That each hug fitted me to her wooden silhouette and the way she would crook her neck sharply whenever I spoke or acted unrehearsed, like I live too free. Like I wouldn't fight to own this body unconditionally. Like I ain't love her like I loved myself and yet, when she snapped her hand back from mine as I reached to hold it, as if my fingers were a pack of rabid dogs hungry, I couldn't help but feel like the trap myself. The way I wanted to pull her out into some pride she didn't have yet, could hear her teeth tearing, so I let go. I never again reached for something she didn't want me holding so loudly, but I can't do quiet love, won't muzzle myself silent again. Been stuck in too many traps, stuck with nothing but phantom limbs, still feeling, still open, still fighting, no longer allowing myself to be a martyr. This love, a crucifixion that I finally picked the last of the iron from my palms, my teeth, bloody broken smile, gnawed through bone and broke that trap like my life depended on it, because it did. <laughs> sunrise with the lights off or just before dawn with my eyes closed and the door locked I don't look down I get dressed without leaving the bathroom keep my back to the mirror check the door lock don't wipe away the steam until my shirt is fully buttoned Look just long enough to shave quick, run a comb through my hair. Look away, ignore the knock, put my belt on, pull it tighter. Are you coming out soon? I did not answer through the door. You can't talk through a door. I take a pill for the allergies, take a pill for the ulcer, take a pill for the migraine I do not yet have, 
and another for the migraine I already do. And I am ready enough. Another day's denial overcome. I have wrapped this shame again. Shoved it down deep where they will never see that I am growing. Still growing. How my baggy clothes became my tight clothes, became the clothes I can no longer wear. Reminders buried in basement boxes. And the new doctor mentions what the old one did and the one before that. As though exercise is just the thing I have forgotten to do all these years. As though I've been waiting to eat my fruits and vegetables for this opportune moment. And the new doctor suggests I eat from a smaller plate, a salad plate, a dessert plate, a tiny saucer, as though this will solve everything, as though this will satisfy the slightest bit of hunger at a time when hunger is the only problem I am capable of solving. Is the only one I cannot hide from that will not go away when I close my eyes.